16. Now, you came up with that pretty quickly because you decided that this was, a lot of you decided this is 64 to the one third times 64 to the one third. And we know 64 to the one third is four. Is four. And so four times four, is, that must be what that is. We got 16. Some good reasoning. Now, I, then I, I pose to, I think, every group, 32 to the 6 fifths. Okay. And that came by a little bit more challenging, but I think everybody uh, agreed on the same thing. Um, one thing that I like, I'm just going to write this whole thing out. But the same reasoning, this must also be 32 to the 1 fifth times 32 to the 1 fifth. 32 is the one-fifth. Because when we multiply all these together and we add their exponents up, there must be one, two, three, five. <laughs> they must all add up to six fifths, right? So you got a factor of or an exponent of a fifth, 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 fifth. And when we add them all together, we should get six fifths. Now, when we look at this, it's no longer mysterious. What, what kind of a number are we looking for? I saw it like you all found it the same way. What kind of a number are we looking for? Which is like, what does what is this number? What does it do? Seven times itself five times. Times itself five times gives you 32. And I, like, you know, the calculator on your paper, I saw two times two times two times two times two, times two, times two is 32. So this is a two, and this is a two, and this is a two, and this is a two. These are all twos, so that's two to the sixth. Or you, it's not too hard to do this. Four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. It's just two to the sixth. Something that might be helpful in general. If we have thirty-two to the six fifths, we talked about earlier how five to the third, two to the seventh is five to the 21, agreed? Yeah. And multiply those together, okay? Uh, keeping that pattern going, we know that when you raise a power to a power, to multiply the powers together. Okay. Uh, so, 32 to the 6 fifths must be the same as 32 to the 1 fifth to the 6th, because when you multiply 6, over 1 times 1 over 5, you get 6 fifths. And then just 32 to the 1 fifth is 2 plus 6, 64. So this has been really great because you guys, doesn't it feel better to kind of discover things than just me telling you them? Okay, it might be a little more frustrating and maybe not like the same as what we're used to, but. Uh, if you can explain something to yourself, then like, your own teacher, and you don't have to have somebody following you around, reminding you, telling you what something means. If you came up with that by yourself. But now we can generalize it. This is what algebra does. That's not right. Algebra. Pretty plainly put, replaces numbers with letters and then generalizes this stuff. Okay? So x, any number, raised to m over n, any fraction. How can we rewrite it? Uh, you know, similar to what we have up there. X one over x to the n and uh, there's a parenthesis and you can have M on the outside. The yeah. N? Like that? Um, um, yeah. One over N. One over N? It needs to come out to M over N, right? Yeah. Right now it comes out to be M times N. Oh, yeah. So it's M to one, one over, over N. Okay. What, what does X to the one over N mean to be? That thing, right? the nth root of x. Okay. So we've described it specifically for like the fifth root of 32, something like that. But in 
general. What are we looking for if we're looking for the nth root of a number x? Some number times itself, this many times should give you this number. And then we're going to raise it to this power. It's good to, to write it this way to the 1 over n power, because then we can translate it to a oh, root, and then we can find out what that root is. Um, now, all the, the, the old rules for exponents still need to be true for rational exponents, fraction exponents. So, um, that's 3 squared times 5 squared, and that 15 squared. Is that true? This is uh, 3 times 3. 5 times 5. Oh, that's 3 times 5 times 3 times 5. That's 15 squared. Yeah. So uh, x to the m times, how can we represent this rule? Does it not have the same factor? What what is the same about this? Like what allows me to just write them, like to just combine the three of the five? Because they have they're both the same power. The same power. So somehow we need to represent in this generalization that power is the same. So, so x, x uh, over m, and then, then another x over m. And x, to the m? Yeah, to the m. I mean, should it be x? Or maybe y? Oh yeah, y. Y because it could be could be x, but it could be something else. Yeah. And in general, we could write that as x, y, x, y the whole thing, to the m power. Okay, well, if you want to call it like exponent distribution, I want to use that. Just when we use words like distribution to mean two different things, it can get a little hairy. So I don't, I don't use those too much. Because I, I think definitions of words are really important. Right now, the mouse of class, we're really hammering them with what a function is. We are going, going way back in time so that we can be sure we understand what a function is. Uh, so this is true of rational exponents as well. If your exponent is the same, 3 to the 2 thirds times uh, 9 to the 2 thirds, that's to the, which is? Now why is it nine? Because, because three times three is nine, and three times three times three is twenty-seven. Okay, so three because well, I guess it depends on how you want to look at it. Three times three times three is is twenty-seven, right? We're looking for the third root of twenty-seven, and then we're going to square it. We have nine. Oh great. Um, well, all I'll say is that all the properties of like this is a property that we already been using. We're just applying it to rational exponents too. Right? Uh, we learned that we should be able to apply properties of like raising a power to a power should multiply the powers. It works for rational exponents too. Uh, multiplying two numbers together that have the same base, we should be able to add the powers together. Okay? Um, those, all those properties are exactly the same for rational exponents. They're still consistent. Uh, and then we just want to practice and get all that and put them together and simplify expressions. So I'm just going to give you your homework and have you practice and, you know, if you've ever been at home and been confused by a homework question, you can ask somebody.